Hello everybody, we are back. Leeds United versus Birmingham. A massive game in the calendar. Make sure you're liking, commenting and subscribing on all the videos. Everybody, please make sure you check out the rumour mill from earlier on today. We are back with the rumour mill throughout this January period. So make sure you're tuning in every single day. Additional bits on the Patreon, everybody. We are steaming towards 30k subscribers as well. Please make sure you subscribe to the One Leeds Fan Channel. I think there's about 45% of you who aren't subscribed. Guys, just whack that subscription button. Hit the bell and listen, you're going to be notified all the time when we upload. So anyway, let's get into it. So Leeds United, Birmingham, Wayne Rooney has obviously taken over uh, John Eustace and taken Birmingham from fifth, I believe it was, into the abyss. And it's I think it's two wins in 14. And we know the script, don't we? We really do know the script. And Listen, I do not want to come on here and, and start with this, but the superstition of being a Leeds United fan will never not follow me around. You know, Alex Neal at Stoke, not on a great one run. Come to Ellen, uh, sorry, we go to the Britannia. They beat us. Sheffield Wednesday on an appalling run. Bottom of the table, nil-nil, come to Ellen Road. It feels like even this season, we've saved managers, you know, Cisco saving his job. They were celebrating at the end, Sheffield Wednesday. We've got to start putting some of these teams away. We really, really have. Gets to a point where you're looking at it and almost laughing at Leeds United just not being able to put some of these lower teams to the sword. Now, Birmingham did a job on us earlier on in the season. That's when I was essentially saying that Leeds are going to struggle in terms of going forward at that period of time. It was the, it was a transfer window. Leeds were in battles, we were not in a good place. You know, you had the likes of, of of Cody Drama playing for Leeds in that game. You had Shackleton, you had Gellhart. The team was an absolute mess. And we played a Birmingham side who, with the greatest of respect to a lot of Birmingham fans, were nowhere near it either. They were not a good side, but they were able to battle. They were able to do probably really similar to what happened to us the other day in terms of playing a bang average side. You know, obviously playing Preston as well. And just being able to nullify Leeds, just being able to play their game and Leeds just get really, really stumped by it. Completely stumped. <clears throat> Completely stumped. We, and you guys have heard this from me before, but we can't seem to break down a, a low, um, a real low block, which is what's probably going to happen to us against Birmingham. There's no way Rooney's going to come and be expansive, which means that Leeds have got to figure it out. You know, at this moment in time, it does feel like even... The, you know, the, the simplest of game plans is, is is foiling leads in terms of, you know, the expansive stuff we love playing, you know, but Ipswich didn't really come out expansive, expansive against Leeds, but their game plan didn't change that much to go into a proper, proper low block. They went into a mid block at stages, you know, they pressed at stages, of course, but Leeds were able to play that game, that yo-yo, that yin-yang game, that up and down, that, that back and forward game. We played... And they played as our game and we battered them. You know, teams uh, surely will have learned that, you know, playing against us like that is a real, real problem. It's a real, real problem. And listen, Birmingham are going to come. They're going to sit in and they're going to try for straight leads. And that's what they did for long periods, even at St. Andrews. But they had, they had, you know, they had their opportunities. They had their time where they could hurt leads. Um, and they did in the end, you know, through a penalty that was given away. Um, by Leeds United. So it's a tricky one. The Birmingham have got a decent record at Ellen Road, uh, even then when they've been in, in tripe circumstances. But I'm hoping a new year is going to bring in a new Leeds United and a Leeds United that can break down the opposition. A Leeds United who the manager turns into someone who, you know, uh, is, is able to adapt. You know, I was speaking to a Norwich friend the other day and, and it was so interesting. He was just saying, that is the exact same as what was happening at Norwich. Exact same with what was happening at Norwich with Daniel Farker. Stubbornness, not taking any accountability or responsibility in, in press conferences for tactical adaptations or personnel involvement. And just keeping the same 11 week in, week out. Now, we saw a bit of a change, didn't we, with Daniel Farker when he made five changes so you have got to take that into consideration, but maybe the pressure is getting to him a little bit. I believe this is the first time he's had this points record in the last five um, in his in his entire career. You know, he didn't have it at Norwich. And that's a startling statistics for, a statistic for me. You know, that Norwich team, for me, wasn't as good as this Leeds side, but there's more balance in that Norwich side than what he has at Leeds, uh, Leeds United for me. 
Now, I was speaking to this Norwich fan in particular, and he was saying that he was very, very, very lucky that he landed with Stuart Webber. You know, he was introduced to his role at Norwich, wanted to make, obviously, a big, big impression. And for those first two or three years, he was he was massive in, in, in the recruitment, obviously, Webber. We know that, you know, the likes of Timu Puki, Buendia, uh, Godfrey, um, you know, all of these players came from Stuart Webber. Stuart Webber's book, you know, Stuart Webber did a, a, a real fantastic job in bringing these players in. And Farker, Farker and him had an excellent relationship, so he's not got that anymore. Um, you know, he's not got a, a free transfer in Timu Puki, who scores 30 goals a season and is a number nine. It's a very different scenario. And I keep hearing this absolute tripe of comparing this side to the Norwich side. I know I've just done it there, but it's just to give you guys an example of how much better going forward in particular this side is than that side. You know, that side had to develop, to develop that side had to get into the swing of things. Um, but this Leeds United side is the caliber wise is so much better. And this, what this is what this Norwich fan was telling me, you know, and he's seeing all of the same hallmarks of Daniel Farker in press conferences and in everything else when it comes to his comparison with Norwich. But I find it difficult to compare to Norwich, obviously, as I've just mentioned to you guys, because it's a completely different time, a completely different era. So, you know, it's like when people are comparing him to Bielsa. You know, if you want to compare him to Bielsa, Bielsa had a, a much worse squad, a 10 times worse squad than what than what Farker's got right now. There's a lot of Leeds fans who are saying, are we overrating the squad? We're not at all. Look at the the, tr- the dross that we're facing week in, week out with the greatest of respect when it comes to championship calibre. This Leeds United side is way, way above some of the teams that we're facing. And I feel like that's a comfort blanket for a lot of Leeds fans just thinking, oh, well, we're not good enough. That's why we're not competing. No, a lot of it is down to the manager. You know, yes, you can blame the players for certain things. Of course you can, stepping up in certain moments. But when there's no tactical ingenuity, no tactical plan, no alternative plan, what are you supposed to do? Now, I'm hearing a lot of as well, Yoel Perot. And I've got to address this. I've got to address this because Leeds fans are just on another level when it comes to this. And I still see it in the comment section below. Joel Perot is not a number nine. And he's not a number nine. Now, I'll take you all the way back to Russell Martin. Russell Martin, who was at Swansea with Joel Perot. Joel Perot, who was nearly signed by Russell Martin when Russell Martin moved to Southampton. Perot chose Leeds. Now, Adam Armstrong was always going to be his front man. So in my opinion, what Martin would have done was incorporate the exact same strategy that he did at Swansea, where it was almost the two tens behind the number nine at Southampton because he's got the players available to do that. Now, he's got Alcaraz there as well who can fit in that role. He's got Stuart Armstrong who can fit in that role. He would have had Joel Perot. That's why he wanted him. He didn't want him in a number nine because he's not a number nine. He's not a number nine. What what I'm going to do to convince some Leeds fans that he's not a number nine is genuinely get a Swansea fan on. I'm going to have to find a Swansea fan. I'm going to put it out into the ether just so some Leeds fans are convinced. There was a post that went out the other day and I commented on it on, on Twitter and it had 300 likes. 300 likes. Daniel Farker needs to play Perot in his natural position. Guys, Jesus Christ. Swansea, Obafemi was in front of him. He was in a sort of 210 role with Patterson. That is how they worked, okay? Joel Perot does not actively play off the shoulder of a centre-back. Never has done, never will. Joel Perot's 41 goals out of, what, 80 at Swansea. If you look at all the goals, literally go on YouTube. All of them, nigh on all of them, are from outside the box or from a number 10 role. His creativity for Obafemi was an unbelievable link link um, at Swansea. That's why I've looked at Obafemi as a nine at Leeds United of this January window. He is not a number nine. Let's get it out there because that is absolute bollocks. And it is, as you can probably tell, it's winding me up. I hear it from every, oh, he's a number nine, he's a number nine, he's a number nine. Type it in on Google, type it in on Twitter. Someone said to me the other day, oh, well, you're listening to Swansea fans. What do they know? It's social media. So, so you're getting it from Swansea fans and he's still not believing it. He is not a finisher inside the box. All of his tendencies as a as a forward player are not that of a number nine. He's not a fox in the box. He's not a match winner from inside the six-yard box. He's not a backdoor header. He's not a front post winner. He's not that sort of striker. He's edge of the D, slam it into the bottom corners. That's what he is. 
He's edge of the D. He's a late arriver. He's not a finisher. He's not. He's not. He's not a, he's not a killer instinct finisher. We saw that in the West Brom game, on the penalty spot. Times it wrong. Plymouth times it wrong. Hull times it wrong. What? Um. Uh, another game. Uh, Ipswich times it wrong. And where did he score from Ipswich? It was a lovely little bit of interplay just inside the box. Swung it in with his wrong foot. That is where he's at. He's most effective. Fifteen to twenty yards out. He is not a number nine. This needs to be an understanding that Leeds don't have a number nine. They don't. Their only number nine is Patrick Bamford, and that's difficult for people to hear, but that's true. Rutter's not. Neither is Perot. As I say, Patterson and Perot in behind Obafemi. That is how they actively played at Swansea. And that's exactly what's happening now at Leeds United. So unless Martin's wrong, and unless Farker's wrong, and unless Martin would have been wrong at Southampton as well, because that is exactly where he'd have played him. Adam Armstrong was always going to be a, fi a feature for him, always, and he's doing really, really well. So he'd have just played Perot in behind him. That would have been the plan. So, guys, I'm going to go in, in this game anyway. With uh, So Perot's going to be in that role. It's going to be the exact same thing again. And Rutter's going to be in that role unless we go out and get a number nine and substitute one of them out. He's not a number nine. Um, so, anyway... Hope that's got it out there. But yeah, guys, I'm going to go with a 2-0 Leeds win for this one. I do think we're going to get back on the horse. But it's a massive game for Daniel Farker. A massive game for Leeds United. We don't want to go three defeats in a row, especially especially when we're six points behind Southampton, 17 points behind Leicester. Leeds need to get back on the horse. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'll see you in a bit.